how should one approach the creation of a sequel? Nissan was faced with this question as it began development of its follow-up to the sensational 350Z. That car was less of a direct sequel and more of a reboot of a beloved classic. It was developed during the retro craze of the late 90s and early 2000s and was going in that direction early on, but then it took on its own character. Things were a bit different with its successor. The 350Z was a market and media darling and remained fresh in everyone's mind. Therefore, it would be in Nissan's best interest to take an evolutionary approach rather than a revolutionary one. Design work on the new car began in 2005. This phase was a bit different than that of the 350Z. For that car, Nissan Studios in Japan, Europe, and the United States went at each other in an international design competition. Their models were evaluated and scrutinized until only one remained. This time, its designers the world over were invited to submit sketches. Participants had to develop their designs outside of work. The designer who created the winning sketch was 31-year-old Randy Rodriguez. The Surrey, British Columbia native was a Z fan through and through. He got his first when he was 14 years old and went on to have owned 11 of them at one point or another. Rodriguez landed internships with GM and Toyota while attending the College of Creative Studies, but had always envisioned himself working for Nissan. The company took note after he won multiple design competitions hosted by the likes of Michelin and PPG. He was hired right out of school. Before getting involved with the Z project, he worked in its studios in Europe and Japan as well as for Infinity. Previous Z cars undoubtedly influenced the new one, but Rodriguez said that he looked to another source of inspiration. The Discovery Channel had its well-known Shark Week special on television while he was developing the design. He also referenced motorcycles and athletes. The 350Z wasn't left behind completely though. He was focused on making it more aggressive and, in his own words, injecting it with some steroids. Rodriguez was involved with the project until the theme was selected. He was then pulled off of it and given other assignments. Nissan's Japanese Design Center got it production ready. The evolutionary philosophy also extended to the mechanicals. Powering it was the VQ37VHR. It was another member of Nissan's VQ engine family. This one had a displacement of 3.7 liters, as well as figures of 332 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. This is also where the car got its name. The transmissions also saw some interesting developments. Its six-speed manual gearbox had a bit of a wrinkle. Buyers could have the car equipped with the Synchro Rev Match system. Essentially, this controls and adjusts engine speed when shifting to the exact speed of the next gear. This resulted in smoother shifts and made heel towing a thing of the past. For those who prefer the old school feel, the system could be deactivated. Rev matching systems are relatively common now, but this was the first time that something like this had been incorporated into a road car. We'll get into what reviewers thought about it a bit later but their reactions typically progressed from bewilderment to disdain and then finally acceptance. The 370Z would also have a 7-speed automatic transmission on offer. It was previously introduced on the Infiniti G37. Cars nowadays typically get larger and heavier with each subsequent generation, but this was not the case here. It shrank and grew in all the right places. Extra weight was also a concern for the team, the 370Z used aluminum in the door panels, hood, and hatch. Engineers also shaved weight off in the fuel tank, exhaust, and audio system. Nissan said that the net weight reduction of the 2009 370Z was 95 pounds when lined up against a comparable 350Z enthusiast model. The new 370Z debuted at the 2008 Los Angeles Auto Show in November. Well, the car actually got into the hands of enthusiasts a day earlier. What's more, for just $60, you could have had your own 370Z. In need for speed undercover. Nissan partnered with game developer Blackbox on the debut of the car. It was featured prominently in the game, even going as far as to place the player in a high-speed pursuit at the start. 
This kind of marketing made an impression on kids like me back in the day, who probably wouldn't get much closer to a car like that than in... What the... Oh, come on. Well, let's head back to LA while I wait for Microsoft to fix my 360. The lineup has been greatly simplified. The previous generation launched with five trim levels and then added the Grand Touring and 35th Anniversary models later on. And that's to say nothing about the Roadster and Nismo grades. Now, the standard Z came in base and touring configurations. The latter came with, among other things, four-way power-adjustable leather seats, a 6CD Bose audio system, and XM satellite radio. Two packages were also on offer. The Sport package, priced from $3,000, came with raised 19-inch wheels, Bridgestone Potenza tires, front and rear spoilers, larger brakes, synchro rev match, and a limited slip differential. The $1,850 navigation package also included a 9.3 gigabyte music box hard drive, as well as an interface system for the iPod. Those were far from the most important numbers though. Nissan managed to keep the price under $30,000. The 370Z launched with an MSRP of $29,930. Meanwhile, the upscale touring grade started at about $34,000. It went on sale in North America in January 2009. The Nismo model was added to the range in July, which was much earlier in the cycle than the 350Z. Additionally, while the previous Nismo didn't increase the power, the 370Z Nismo did. It rose from 332 horsepower to 350. Torque also ticked up slightly to 276. This was thanks to a reworked ECU and exhaust system. It also featured a revised suspension, new wheels, larger brakes, and a $39,000 base price. That summer also saw the release of the Roadster variant. It started at around $37,000 while the Touring was priced at about $42,000. Car and Driver got its hands on one that sadly lacked the SRM system and published its findings in December of 2008. In many ways, it was an upgrade over the 350Z. The interior, for instance, did away with the vast expanses of black plastic in favor of supple leather, premium stitching, and metal accents. Other aspects in this area of the car left them scratching their heads. One of the biggest came from the fuel and water temperature gauges. Instead of going with traditional dials, Nissan opted to use a light dot display. The magazine was not a fan of this approach, comparing it unfavorably to a quote-unquote Pep Boys knickknack. It was a pre-production model and the company assured them that it would be more readable on the real thing. These missteps notwithstanding, the 370Z still managed to impress them. A more in-depth look revealed additional findings. No doubt the biggest revelation came in the SRM system. By their own estimations, the experienced car and driver pilots were able to match the revs correctly about 80% of the time. With electronic assistance, this jumped to 100%. It was so good that they reckoned that even the most stubborn drivers would leave it on. The driving dynamics impressed them as well. They found it fun and engaging, if a bit harsh. There were a few complaints though. Excessive road noise and poor visibility held it back a bit. Eddie Alterman of the New York Times praised it as well, even going as far as to compare it to the flagship GTR. He was also resistant to the idea of the rev matching assistance, but realized that it was much more accurate than he was. It also allowed him to give greater attention to the braking and steering. Alterman occasionally deactivated it for a more engaging driving experience, but could not deny its merits. A Motor Trend review briefly compared it to its predecessor and summed their differences up by saying, quote, It feels sharp, direct, and balanced. A well-honed Santoku knife to the 350Z's blunter and bulkier cleaves. The sports car landscape had been shaken up once again, and the pressure was on the Nissan to show out. Motor Trend put it up against three of its closest competitors in an April 2009 comparison test. The recently introduced Pontiac Solstice Coupe brought up the rear. Its seductive looks couldn't mask its poor visibility, dated 5-speed transmission, and subpar interior quality. Testers also took issue with its top. There was nowhere to place the included hardtop, 
meaning that it would have to be left behind if its owner fancied an open-air experience. Even the optimal soft top gave them trouble. It took up most of the cargo room and had a cumbersome assembly process. The RX-8 gave the 350Z more than a few headaches back in the day. Years later, it was set to do the same to a successor. This particular example was equipped with a sporty R3 package, which added traction control, a rear spoiler, revised suspension, and Recaro seats. Unfortunately, Mazda's shining star was beginning to show its age. Abysmal fuel economy and a harsh ride kept it out of the winner's circle. BMW's 135i brought home the silver medal. It was every bit as composed on the road as one expects a BMW to be. It wasn't perfect though. Some of the panel felt that it didn't look quite right from certain angles. A tight back seat and cramped footwell were also negatives. And with an as-tested price of $37,775, it was the most expensive car present. The 370Z was the last one standing. Its improvements turned it into an even more compelling product than the old model. It did exceptionally well against its contemporaries, but how would it fare against a more upscale product? Road and Track found out when it put the car up against the Porsche Cayman S. I'm gonna spoil this one for you. The Porsche won. The Z still put up a better fight than you might expect. It stuck with it in terms of performance, but fell behind when it came to refinement, composure, and interior quality. But with a sticker price that was nearly half of its rival, the Z had nothing to be ashamed of. Updates were relatively minor to start. 2010 saw the introduction of the 40th Anniversary Edition. This was a touring model wearing an exclusive 40th quartz exterior color and red leather interior. The model also received a unique wheel finish, red stitching, and a plaque of authenticity. Black Cherry also became an extra cost exterior color. Changes for 2011 and 2012 were even milder. In the former, a rear view monitor was added to the navigation package. It also added another new color in gun metallic. The latter saw an oil cooler become standard equipment. A major refresh was on tap for 2013, and it shouldn't take you long to spot the differences. Its distinctive fangs have been removed, leaving a rectangular opening that is somewhat reminiscent of the openings on the 240Z and 350Z. I polled my viewers on which front-end execution they preferred, and the post-facelift mug went out convincingly, taking home 62% of the total vote. A commenter in favor of them argued that they distinguished the Z33 from other generations of the sports car. Without them, there just wasn't very much setting it apart. A few others preferred the cleaner look of the 2013 model. One felt so strongly about it that he put it up, or down, with models like the Juke and Cube. The redesign came with other exterior changes as well. Vertical running lights were set at either end of the car. Around the back, the dark reflector was replaced with a red one. For some reason, the base price this year jumped to $33,120. The following year, it fell back down to $30,780. Nissan dropped the price of several models this year in an attempt to increase sales. Lastly, two new colors were added in magma red and midnight blue. Changes for the 2014 model year were relegated to the Nismo. Gray coloring was added to the front, rear, side sills, side mirrors, and spoiler. Inside, the car received Alcantara steering wheel trim, various other Alcantara appointments, red accents, and a red Nismo tack. The trim levels got a shake in 2015. The sport and navigation packages were retired. The equipment in the former was now in the sport grade, while the technology in the latter was included in the sport tech trim. The steering and suspension systems were also retuned. Larger changes were in store for the Nismo. Starting this year, the 7-speed automatic transmission became available as an option. Up to this point, even going back to the 350Z, the Nismo had only been available with a manual. Nissan also unveiled an intriguing concept that year. The Nismo 370Z Roadster concept was a one-off show car that was produced to gauge interest in an open-top variant. It was also equipped with an automatic. The changes probably would have increased its appeal, 
but the company likely didn't get the response it was expecting because it never entered serious production. 2016 saw the introduction of Deep Blue Pearl, as well as newfangled audio tricks. The first was active noise cancellation. This helped to cancel out low-frequency engine noise while preserving those in the higher end. Active sound enhancement, quote, enhanced natural engine sounds to help bolster the acceleration experience. Yeah, they were piping engine sounds into the cabin through the speakers. Enthusiasts usually detest these systems, and the Z faithful were no different. When you type in Nissan 370Z Active Sound Enhancement into Google, many of the top results are either bemoaning the system or asking if it could be disabled. The only update for 2017 was the reintroduction of Chicane Yellow, a rather fetching color in my opinion. Another touch-up was in store the following year. It brought darkened headlights, tail lights, and lower rear clip. Vibrant red was added to the paint selection as well. A new Heritage Edition accessories package could be added for $790. It could be ordered in either yellow or black and included custom graphics and yellow interior trim. The 2019 lineup featured an even simpler range. Nissan combined the Touring and Sport Tech trims into a single Sport Touring grade. A pearl white Heritage model also came into the fold. An auto dimming rear mirror with a rear view monitor came standard on all trims. Lastly, the Roadster was discontinued in the American market. Its price had ballooned up to nearly $43,000 and the 7 speed automatic became the sole transmission choice. Curiously, it continued to be offered in Canada. 2020 turned out to be the 370Z's final year on the market. It also coincided with the Z's 50th anniversary. To commemorate this occasion, the company released the 50th anniversary package. Realizing that the Z33 was being produced way back when it turned 40 just puts into perspective how long it lasted on the market. A paint job inspired by the livery on the Brock Racing Enterprise's Datsun 240Z was the main draw. The execution falls flat in my opinion. On the old car, the lines were directly behind the front wheels and far ahead of the cabin, and they also continued onto the hood. It all just worked with the car's proportions. On the 370Z, the livery feels like an afterthought. The short stripes appear to be haphazardly applied. They also make the car appear larger than it actually is. Nissan's send-off to its long-running sports car was a mixed bag, to say the least. Motor Trend tested an anniversary edition, and it's fascinating to see how expectations in the sports car scene had evolved around the Z33. The car that had been praised for its precision and technological prowess was now noted for its old-school feel. It summed it up perfectly by saying, the car drives stupidly raw. This is a good thing. And with that, the car was finished. The Z name was put to rest once again, though this time things were a bit different. It would only be out of production for a little while. Fans were assured that they'd receive at least one more entry in the legendary model line.